Thus Spoke Zarathustra by Friedrich Nietzsche, translated by Walter Kaufman. Book Two The Child with the Mirror. Then Zarathustra returned again to the mountains and to the solitude of his cave and withdrew from men, waiting like a sower who has scattered his seed. But his soul grew full of impatience and desire for those whom he loved, because he still had much to give them. For this is what is hardest, to close the open hand because one loves, and to keep a sense of shame as a giver. Thus months and years passed for the solitary, but his wisdom grew and caused him pain with its fullness. One morning, however, he woke even before the dawn, reflected long, lying on his bed, and at last spoke to his heart. Why was I so startled in my dream that I awoke? Did not a child step up to me, carrying a mirror? Oh, Zarathustra, the child said to me, look at yourself in the mirror. But when I looked into the mirror, I cried out, and my heart was shaken, for it was not myself I saw, but a devil's grimace and scornful laughter. Verily, all too well do I understand the sign and admonition of the dream. My teaching is in danger. Weeds pose as wheat. My enemies have grown powerful and have distorted my teaching, till those dearest to me must be ashamed of the gifts I gave them. I have lost my friends. The hour has come to seek my lost ones. With these words, Zarathustra leaped up, not like a frightened man seeking air, but rather as a seer and singer who is moved by the spirit. Amazed, his eagle and his serpent looked at him, for, like dawn, a coming happiness lay reflected in his face. What has happened to me, my animals? said Zarathustra. Have I not changed? Has not bliss come to me as a storm? My happiness is foolish, and will say foolish things. It is still young, so be patient with it. I am wounded by my happiness. Let all who suffer be my physicians. I may go down again to my friends, and to my enemies too. Zarathustra may speak again and give and do what is dearest to those dear to him. My impatient love overflows in rivers, downward, towards sunrise and sunset. From silent mountains and thunderstorms of suffering, my soul rushes into the valleys. Too long have I longed and looked into the distance. Too long have I belonged to the loneliness. Thus I have forgotten how to be silent. Mouth have I become through and through, and the roaring of a stream from towering cliffs. I want to plunge my speech down into the valley. Let the river of my love plunge where there is no way. How could a river fail to find its way to the sea? Indeed, a lake is within me, solitary and self-sufficient. But the river of my love carries it along, down to the sea. New ways I go, a new speech comes to me. Weary I grow, like all creators of the old tongues. My spirit no longer wants to walk on worn souls. Too slowly runs all speech for me. Into your chariot I leap, storm, and even you I want to whip with my sarcasm. Like a cry and a shout of joy, I want to sweep over wide seas till I find the blessed isles where my friends are dwelling, and my enemies among them. How I now love all to whom I may speak. My enemies, too, are part of my bliss. And when I want to mount my wildest horse, it is always my spear that helps me up best, as the ever-ready servant of my foot, the spear that I hurl against my enemies. How grateful I am to my enemies that I may firmly hurl it. The tension of my cloud was too great. Between the laughter of lightning bolts, I want to throw showers of hail into the depths. Violently, my chest will expand. Violently will it blow its storm over the mountains and thus find relief. Verily, let the storm come my happiness and my freedom. But let my enemies believe that the evil one rages over their heads. Indeed, 
you too will be frightened, my friends, by my wild wisdom. And perhaps you will flee from it, together with my enemies. Would that I knew how to lure you back with shepherd's flutes. Would that my lioness, wisdom, might learn how to roar tenderly. And many things have we already learned together. My wild wisdom became pregnant on lonely mountains. On rough stones she gave birth to her young, her youngest. Now she runs foolishly through the harsh desert and seeks and seeks gentle turf. My old wild wisdom, upon your hearts, gentle turf, my friends, upon your love, she would bed her most dearly beloved. Thus spoke Zarathustra.